Good afternoon, everybody. This is David Cerns with Haley Marketing, and welcome to today's Lunch with Haley webinar. Well, today is one of my favorite events. It's our annual show and tell with Haley Marketing, where we get to show off some of the stuff that we've been doing in the past 12 months. Uh, normally, show and tell is done over the summer, you know, take a little break from all the education that we normally do and just show you some cool projects, some of our favorite work, and some interesting case studies of accomplishments we've been helping our clients to achieve. But we've got a lot to cover today, and on the line with me are Kelly, Matt, and Aaron, and we are going to talk through a ton of different projects. We're going to take a look at websites. We're going to take a look at our award-winning Social Pro, Managed Social Media Services. We're going to review programmatic job advertising, how we're helping companies to better manage their spend on Indeed and other job boards. Look at some of our latest offerings for pay-per-click advertising, both in the world of Google PPC and social. Um, Aaron's going to specifically talk about video marketing and a really interesting case study of one of our clients who's been using video more in their sales process. We'll get some updates with our Haley Mail service, some interesting direct marketing campaigns that we've designed, a couple of examples of collateral, and then we'll bring it all home with a review of branded content. And this one's really exciting because, as a lot of you know, um, we merged with Mamu Media back in February, and uh, just a couple of months ago, we started our first joint product promotion, and we'll wrap it up showing you what that's all about and some of the results companies get with branded content. We are going to jump right in with websites, and so for websites, we're going to look at a couple of different things, but to do that, I actually have to jump out of PowerPoint, and we're going to jump over to an actual web browser, and we're gonna take a look at a couple of things. So I'm gonna kick off websites and talk to you a little bit about the ways we have built websites and what we've done in the last year. So with our websites, we do value sites, starter sites, custom sites, three different approaches, three different price points, three different levels of customization. So really, no matter what size business you are, what the need is, we can come up with a solution for you. So our starter sites are the really robust base models, and it's definitely our most popular. And what you're looking at on screen here is a library of our starter sites. And you see a lot of them have flags that say ADA compliant. And that's been a big late 2019 to early 2020 change is staffing websites need to be compliant with the Americans with Disabilities Act. Unfortunately, our industry is a target for lawsuits. And if we wanna keep our businesses safe from litigation, we have to make sure that somebody who is visually impaired can effectively navigate our website look for jobs, apply to jobs without being impeded at all by the design of the website. So it took a lot of work to figure out how to build sites that are ADA compliant, but I'm really excited that our team has been doing it. And with our starter sites, as I mentioned, these are base models. So if I put my mouse over any of them, you can kind of see what they look like. We can actually jump into a website and see how the model performs. So I can see the animation. I can see how the pages are laid out. I can see what it looks like on a desktop on a tablet, on a smartphone. I can also see what we do with some of these sites. And I'm actually gonna turn it over to Kelly here as we're gonna take a look at how we start with these base models and what we then turn them into for our clients because this is really a starting point for what turns out to be a great custom solution. So Kelly, talk to us a little more about some of our starters. Great, sure, not a problem. I got some great examples. Um, we actually were just talking today, our design team has been turning out some fabulous sites um, based off of the starter site. So if we start with the core team site, this is based on our Eldorado model. And you'll notice, um, David, if you refresh the page real quick, um, we've got some branding elements that we bring in here on the animation, particularly in the headlines, there's a nice little bouncing dot that pulls in the dot from their logo. Um, we've got a homepage, video in the background moving. And as you scroll through, you'll see the rest of this particular home page. Elements are coming on and off of the page as you scroll. Um, under the about section, David, I'm gonna have you jump over there as you drive the car. Um, the Our Story is an animated timeline. Again, elements of the timeline. Scroll and you'll see the little bar and dots on the left-hand side that goes through the um, history of Core Team. This site also has one of the Haley Marketing plugins under the Our Team, so back to About Us under Our Team. And this is Our Team Bios Manager, where you can add 
team bios, then we can display them in many different ways. We've got circles going here again to play off of that branding and view profile will pop up a quick profile of each person. So that's core team. If we want to jump over to pirate, it's another site built on one of our starter sites, the Mazamo base. This has some fun and engaging ways that we express their brand here. Again, you'll see that we've got animated text coming in on the banner there as you scroll to, and this is carried out throughout all the animated headlines. We've included a pirate ship in the footer of the site, which has a cute little um, element to add more of their branding. You scroll to the footer. And then also, if you go to locations, David, they have locations throughout several states, and you'll notice that we have a map. And if you click on the map or scroll, we've actually reused their logo, the pirate ship logo, as the pin on the map. So that's another fun way to, to carry through some branding on that one. Um, and then on to another site for team concepts. I'm pointing out each one of these because you'll see how we take our base starter. This base starter was one of our sh was called Shasta, and we carry branding and your brand throughout the site. So this is a Miami, a Miami Dade, Florida-based client. We've used some palm trees, really unique call to action there on the right popping in. And we've also throughout the banner of the subpages reused elements again of the logo to represent their team. Sorry, to represent the Team Concepts brand. <laughs> and again, as you keep scrolling through these pages, you'll see how elements are coming on and off from the left or the right. We've used icons to create different um, special, to identify each one of their specialties here. Yep, and there are people we place, there's icons for each one of those. All right, thanks. That's all. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, that's all I have for starters. <laughs> well, actually, I was jumping in because I wanted to, to show an example. Um, we talked about the customization, and you mentioned you know, El Dorado, Mazama, Shasta. If I go back to the, the starter sites, for those of you who are paying close attention, you may have seen some of these names. And for those of you who really know your mountain ranges, these are all actually named after mountains in the Pacific Northwest. And these are the starting points. So the Mazama that we saw. Um, this is what the base site looked like, and that was pirate. Pirate. This is the finished product, so very different. And and we also looked at an El Dorado example, which was the core team website. I go back to their homepage, and then I've got another one here: athlete career placement. Oops, sorry. Let's bring theirs up. You kind of see again that that animation that builds. And I know over GoToWebinar, the animation won't be perfect, but you're welcome to go to any of these websites. You can see what we do to really bring in changes in colors, fonts, background pictures, or in this case, textures, uh, to make each site fit the brand of each specific client. All right, Kelly, now I'll turn it back over to you because um, Kelly manages most of our bigger custom website projects, and she's got one she'd like to show you today. Right. So we're going to take a look at marquee staffing and the difference between a starter site and a custom site is a custom site we literally start on pen to paper and start with a unique design. The, what I love about marquee is this is actually the third site we've done with them over the past 12 years with the company. So I've gotten to know them very well. The previous the site previous to this was one of our first very long scrolling homepage designs that became very popular in um, website design. This particular site went completely opposite. We want very um, concise, short home page. You'll notice the marquee specialties. If you click on the arrows, that actually scrolls through all of the specialties and services. Sorry, I went too far, Kelly. <laughs> you went too far, you clicked. <laughs> you can scroll on the arrows on the left and the right. And this is very important to marquee is to highlight those specialties and those solutions and services that they offer and make them very front and center. Initially, when we were on the homepage, there were actually two call to actions on this um, site as well. Um, but we don't have to, David, you don't have to refresh. And we've got another background video that you're seeing in the back. 
this site highlight again highlights their specialties and solutions. If you go to a sub page, it's very, very concise and short copy. And you'll notice on the navigation, we've got a drop down navigation. So you can find any page on the site. But here we're looking for work. It's very short copy, very strong calls to action. The buttons, there's not a lot of content here. We want to get you your or your candidate to the next step. And what they're going to do is apply. And then we have a unique, um, that's our testimonials plugin right there on the bottom where you can add testimonials in the back end and they show up in the rotation as well. So Kat, Kelly, you mentioned a couple of times, a couple of things, the plugins. I want to highlight that for a second. One of the things that um, we've been working on over probably the last two years is building our own WordPress plugins. We build all of our sites in WordPress. Um, because it's the most popular platform for content management. If for any reason, at any point, somebody wanted to take one of our websites and take it somewhere else for editing or updating, you can find developers all over the planet who can update a WordPress website. But we wanted to enhance what WordPress can do. And so if you're familiar with WordPress, you know that there's a huge network of developers who build plugins. And we started to create some of our own. So Kelly mentioned a couple of them, the testimonials manager the team profiles manager, those fly-ins you saw on the websites. We have a fly-in manager. We also have another way to do that now with part of how we're building websites that I'll explain in a moment. We have a case studies manager. We have plugins to make it easy to search jobs in different ways on different pages. And the idea is we're just trying to specifically focus on plugins that drive response because really we love to build pretty websites. We love to build clever copy, but mostly we love to build websites that get people to take action. Go ahead, Kelly, you about to say something? I was if you scroll up a little bit on this page, that shows our um, job board widgets, which are part of the plugins, where you just scroll up a little bit, the hot jobs, we're pulling in jobs from the job board and, oh. <laughs> I apologize, I went the wrong direction. You just have to scroll up a little on that page. There you go. We've got hot jobs, we're pulling in jobs from the Haley Marketing job board or career portal that's on the site. And then you can also search right there on the page. Thank you. Next time yep, I'll rehearse no more so that I can, I can better scroll. All right, well, before we jump out of websites and move on in the presentation, one more thing I want to talk about, and this is something really unique to the way we build websites, is on the back end, not only are we building in WordPress, but there's two things we're doing. We're now building with something called a page builder. We're using a, a tool called Elementor. And so why do you care about Elementor? Well, if you're getting a website built for you and you want to be able to edit that website, WordPress is a content management system that anybody can use. However, it allows anybody to add text to a page. If you really want to know how to do more advanced things, some of the animations you saw on these examples, a normal lay person, a normal non-developer like me, I, we, I don't know how to do that. You probably don't know how to, how to code to make that happen. Elementor eliminated the need to code. With a page builder, once you log in, you actually are editing the page in what looks like the web page instead of looking like just a box of text. You can add sections to a page. You can add all new pages. You can add animation effects without being a programmer. So it's a really cool new layer. It's, it's helped our team to build much more robust websites in less time, which has allowed us to um, maintain, and in some cases, actually reduce prices on websites by adding in better ways to build. And that's a big part of what we try to do here is find ways to better ways to build websites. And speaking of that, the other ways is better ways to know how websites are working. And with every website, we'll install Google Analytics. And if you know how to read reports and plow through analytics, then you don't have to worry about what I'm about to show. But if you're not familiar with analytics, you don't want to log in there, well, then you can log into MyHaley, which is our backend for all of our software. And in MyHaley, one of the things we have is a performance dashboard for your website and for SEO. And then we also have it for other products that we sell. So here's an example of a company whose website I'm logged into. It shows me that in the last 90 days, they've had 22,000 visitors to their website. Almost 20,000 of those were new people, first time visitors. Their jobs have been viewed 66,000 times. They've had 1,100 job applications and 44 people submit contact or other forms on their website. They can see where people are coming to from the website. They can see where their applications are coming from directly from their job board, or in this case, zip recruiters providing 42% of their replies. They can look at every form that's being filled out. So they've had a lot of people filling out the contact us and the assignment feedback form. And even better, the request an employee form, 42 job orders in the last 90 days coming from their website. SEO, they can see in the last 
this would be 30 days, but let's set it a little longer time frame. Let's look at 90 days. They've had 11,000 visitors to their website from search engines who found their website using 2,767 keywords. Now, Kelly had mentioned that we're writing a lot of shorter copy and in, in a really good website, if you're thinking about your website, you almost have to think about a copy hierarchy. The higher level pages should be really short copy so that in a matter of seconds, like three to five seconds, somebody can figure out what you're talking about, what they're interested in, know where to click. But from an SEO perspective, search engine optimization, deeper in the site, we want long copy, whether it's a specialties page, a local offices page, a description of your services or your blog posts. That long copy is what gets you found by 2,767 keywords because the more you're producing long copy deeper in the site, the better it is for SEO. At the top of the site, short copy because that's better for humans to find what they want. And so these dashboards, they're just part of the, the performance mechanisms that we provide with all of our websites. Okay, now it's back to PowerPoint and we're gonna move on from websites. And we are gonna go on to our social pro services. So Matt, if I can ask you to jump in and walk us through some examples of social pro. Happy to David, good afternoon or good morning everyone. And social pro at Haley Marketing is our award-winning custom social media marketing program where we start by taking your goals of obviously applications or job orders and really put together a, a comprehensive strategy to align with those goals. And we wanna make sure every post has a purpose, right? We wanna make sure that mentality is there. And through these next few slides, we'll, we'll show some of those examples here with the Social Pro program. Here on the slide where it talks about A-B testing, it's, it's a really great marketing tactic to, to do different testing to make sure we're connecting with our audience. And when COVID hit in the first half of this year, we had even more uncertainty than we did right now. And these were different posts that we, we shared on Facebook just to test something out, to see by just changing the photos and a little bit of the copy, but really putting the photos to have the people in the photos in masks, which in February, we never would have thought of. But in May or in June, and even now, that became a realistic option. And we posted that to see what would work. Um, with the construction staffing agency, you know, they saw their cost per candidate decrease by almost 28% just by changing some of the copy, by changing that imagery to having the workers in the masks. We didn't adjust the budget at all. That was getting a lot of good results. The general staffing agency in Oklahoma saw their cost per candidate decrease by nearly 47%. And overall, the applications were increased by 50%. All we did with part of the program was try new imagery because if we think about it when people you know the uncertainty was there but also when people are on their phones and scrolling and scrolling we need something that stops their thumbs right to stops your fingers to get you to take note of an image because we process images you know tens of thousands of times faster than copy that imagery made people feel safe and led to applications for these you know the construction agency and the general warehouse staffing agency as well the next slide jumps in with a lot of, you know, dynamic images that are engaging and really are a core part of the Social Pro program because we create that custom imagery to match your branding and really build that branding relationship with your audience. The theme on the left is a very basic but smart way to connect with the company's name of peak staffing. And you see it with the, you know, the gondola going to the top of the mountain or reaching your peak. It's it's awesome message to inspire people, obviously to do more in their careers, while also keeping with the branding, you know, of the company through the imagery. It's it's a great way to to showcase that branding throughout, you know, their social media profiles. The middle one's a little unique, right? It's a it's a unique theme with some out of the box imagery and some captions that really helped focus staff stand out to the audience. Right? It doesn't have to be a hundred percent locked into your company name but it, it goes down to their company branding, their employer branding to help them really stand out with their audience and with those out of the box imagery and captions that you know I talked about a little earlier that jumps out on your phone, that jumps out on your, your desktop, your laptop screen to get people to stop and consume the content. 
Then lastly, on the right one part of the Social Pro program we have is when we deliver fun facts. We call it Fun Fact Friday. And with First Staff, they, they went with that theme and built off it to highlight their internal team, right? A branch manager, a staffing supervisor, and it showcased their team, which is a great way to, to shift the Fun Fact Friday to focus on their internal staff. But also with social media, if we think about it, a lot of the content that receives the most engagement, the most likes, the most comments, the most shares are when they're of actual people because you know they wanna share it with their coworkers, their family, their friends, and everybody will engage with that content and extend that reach, the impressions, the amount of people who see your, your content free. And that's a great way to, to showcase your employment brand. By the way, did we did we test Janet on how well she could remember our phone number? I, I love that fun fact. <laughs> That'd be a great video, David. Now we're going to jump over to programmatic job advertising. And it's a word that's really, I think, become more common throughout staffing, but there's still a lot of um, misunderstanding of what it is. And by programmatic, we say, you know, we're looking to get more ROI to your recruitment spend. It's through automation, through technology, and through our expertise. And we'll jump through here two examples of clients that we've worked with where we, sh we were able to deliver more ROI. The first one here is a, a company, industrial staffing company in Northeast Ohio, to where we just managed their, managed their Indeed spend. We wanted to make that Indeed spend go farther based on their recruiting needs in their local geography and with some job types, right? They had a couple suburbs of the Cleveland area they wanted to focus on we made sure some of the budget always went there. You know, they had high priority jobs, we made sure the budget went there. They had maintenance jobs, we made sure the budget went there. And the results came through right before when they were managing internally, when they were working directly just with Indeed, you know, they were getting a good number, like 568 applications a month, but they were looking for more, right? They were looking to get more because recruiting is always a challenge and staffing, you wanna keep the pipeline as full as possible. When they were working with us, it jumped up, right? We were able to get them 915 applications a month and their cost did increase, but that's also, you know, their ad spend went down with Indeed, but they were able to also include that cost to get 61% more applications. Their cost went up about 6%, but the Hilly marketing team was able to manage that and they were able to outsource that recruitment spend, just like staffing agencies outsource are hiring to you. You know, they outsource it to us and gives their team more time to spend recruiting. It also drove more applications at a lower cost, which really could be important right now because we're hearing from so many staffing agencies. And even I talked to a, a direct hire recruiter the other day that ghosting is so commonplace right now. If you can just have more people in the pipeline, that can help you get more placements. And Matt, before we move on, I kind of want to reiterate a point. Like this wasn't, we didn't have to send the jobs to a whole bunch of new places. We took their Indeed spend and we just helped them manage it more intelligently. And if you look at the difference, they spent an extra $232, but they added nearly 400, 350 additional applications for 200 bucks. That's pretty amazing result just by, as Matt was talking about, managing which jobs are getting the investment and spend. Yeah, that doesn't even include the time they saved internally by not having to manually post jobs or talk to Indeed, et cetera. So that's, that's a tough one even to quantify the money they save there. The next example jumps into um, a unique client we work with where they stop, they staff in the healthcare um, industry, but it's also clinical and non-clinical. And we were able to you know, create campaigns to where they had a portion of the budget allocated on the clinical side and then on the non-clinical side, because you need a different strategy if you're recruiting for a registered nurse or for a janitor position. And before they were just posting on Indeed, as you can see, you know, 379 applications a month, around $3,000 in spend. And they were just looking to reach more job boards. They were looking to obviously get more applications as well, but they didn't wanna just rely on one place. They wanted to get their applications to more sources. So we incorporated Indeed and ZipRecruiter, the AppCast Accelerate job board network. Um, then we also tried out Monster and Next to keep flexibility in the plan to see if those job boards worked for them. And the results were really strong here too as well, right? They had a 131% increase in applications. You know, their cost did go up 17%, but their CEO was really excited about how we had source tracking in place to make sure 
to know it, where the best candidates are coming from. And now moving forward, we're able to see where their placements are coming from and shift that money around to the job boards and the sources that are leading to the most placements and the most actual physical revenue for the company. And Matt, I love this one because you, you know, here you spent $510 and you had a 231% increase in the number of applications for clinical and non-clinical <coughs> healthcare professionals in a really competitive market in Northern California. So, you know, we'd love for you to shameless plug here, check out the latest episode of Insights on the St Secrets of Staffing Success podcast, where we had our 50th episode recently. And, you know, I dug into the two ways I think programmatic advertising really works for for the staffing industry. Last few slides here for me today are gonna jump into different examples of our pay-per-click, which are digital advertising campaigns we're running on Facebook and Google to target your audience and deliver results. The first one here is with BOS staffing and on the Google Display Network. We've been working with them aggressively, you know, since April 2019. So, you know, a long, a pretty extended campaign here. And when COVID hit, you know, the reopening started to come in the late April, beginning of May of this year, 2020, they got aggressive. They wanted to increase market share and visibility and engage with all audiences. They want, they doubled their spend. They launched some new targeting options to reach a different audience and obviously changed some of their messaging because it needed to, to develop that relevant, timely message in 2020. The results came through and you know their conversion rate more than tripled where we were just under 1%, now it was over 3%, which is, it sounds small, but that's, that's a really high percentage when you're talking about just those digital ads that are on Google's display network. And building off of that to get physical numbers, it went from 13 to 81. So an over 600% increase in application conversions just off of these ads by changing, you know, they were in a position where they could be aggressive and get some new tactics in place, get some more money in place and updated their ad copy and imagery to connect with their audience. And it's been, it's really helped them ensure their, their position in the marketplace by connecting with the right people at the right time with the right message. And just Matt, before we move on, you know, for anybody who may not be as familiar with PPC, can you explain what a conversion rate is? Conversion rate would be, you know, when somebody clicks on your ad or sees on your ad, and then they go to the destination. So, you know, for in this case, if somebody sees these ads, then they click the apply now, it'll take them to a job posting. So when, after somebody clicks on that, the number of people that convert. So if we had 100 people click on the ad and five people submit an application, your conversion rate would be 5%. Obviously you want that to be higher and there's industry standards that we benchmark with to make sure these are we're converting at a good success rate but that's where we're looking to really get back that ROI of campaigns to make sure we're targeting the right people to make sure our ads are right and to make sure that that page we're sending them to is easy to capture and collect information thanks man and that that 0 0.98 which looks like such a low number that is actually pretty close to the industry averages mm -hmm. The next two examples, this one will we'll shift over to the Facebook side, which continues to evolve and grow as a, as a place to recruit active candidates, especially as you see here in, in the light industrial side. And Westside personnel, you know, light industrial in St. Louis, Missouri, they, like everyone, continuing the struggle and want a higher volume of applications. So we went in and we're continuing to create Facebook posts around their hot jobs that really appeal to candidate pain points you know why would somebody want to switch a job that's why we're what we're trying to share in the imagery in the copy to collect and gather those applications so through this campaign you know we led to 20 percent more total of applications and the tactics we use were you know we posted the jobs on facebook and we were able to to boost the ads and to target excuse me these ads went back to the client's website so we're able to um, increase the applications by more than 20% of going right back to their job board and targeting those light industrial candidates in the area. So it helps increase their number of applications, 
you know, it's a low cost of 41 cents per click, which is almost as good as you would you would have on an Indeed and ZipRecruiter. And it just underscores the importance of having a really strong message to your audience to where they're spending time looking for jobs. And Facebook continues to be that place where people spend a lot of time. And if your audience is spending a lot of time on there, they might go to Facebook when they're frustrated or just ready for a new job. And if your message is there at the right time, you're able to convert. The last one here is where we are talking about Facebook job ads. And it's a company in you know, Michigan, Indiana area to where they're still look, they're looking, you know, once again, a common theme here, industrial candidates, you know, struggling to find them, but also Facebook is a great way to target those candidates. And we posted jobs in the Facebook jobs marketplace every week to where we're getting more visibility for their most critical jobs. And this tactics keeps the candidate right on Facebook to have them convert really easily. It's just one click and they're able to apply. And the way we're able to really take this to the next level is Facebook makes it really easy just to click boost and put spend behind the jobs. But our team here uses the Facebook business manager to target the you know job seekers in that geographic market or maybe target previous website visitor targeting your candidate database and really making sure we're re-engaging with your past candidates or reaching some new candidates. And the results here were, you know, 460 applications where the average cost comes down to less than $1.50. And similar to what I said on the last slide, you know, a quick apply of less than $2 is as strong as you're gonna see on, you know, the traditional job boards that we think of. So this is really showing the results of active candidate targeting on Facebook, delivering a lot of applications at a low cost. Thanks, Matt. Good stuff. I love what we're doing with uh, with PPC, and I love how create, creative the team is being. But just importantly, these companies that we're working with uh, have given us the freedom to do that testing, try new things, because with a lot of this paid advertising, when, when Matt started with A-B testing, that's what we're trying to do is there's not one formula that works for every company. And it's not like, well, I tried this and it didn't work. So therefore the whole strategy doesn't work. It's I tried this. I didn't, it didn't work. What I learned from it, how do I adjust it? And what you're seeing here is, you know, there's lots of different ways to drive results, but you have to be constantly experimenting to find the best things for your business in your region, depending on what the employment market looks like where you are and the kinds of people you recruit. All right, let us move on now. And I believe, uh, Aaron, you're going to come and talk about how some of our clients are using video in their marketing. Oh, thanks, David. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm really excited to uh, to be on this because um, I know with in terms of a show and tell, we've done a lot of showing. I'd like to tell a story. Um, and I think this story is going to showcase um, some of the services that we can provide to our clients, but also the way in which we can partner with our clients to better serve their clients. Uh, the client that I'd like to spotlight is Lions HR. And I'm going to tell a story and then I'm going to talk about video now, which is one of the tools that, in our tool belt that we can offer to our clients. So Lions HR is a PEO or professional employer organization. Um, they're mostly in the South, in Georgia, Alabama, North Carolina in Texas and Florida, and they provide services, HR services, risk management, employee benefits, tax, payroll, et cetera. Um, one of the things in, in my conversations with them, you know, we've been working with them for a number of years now, um, one of the, the common um, quotes that they say, every client relationship is a story and an opportunity to truly partner. That's something that they tell me. So that kind of frames this story and when covid happened it hit and then the shutdown occurred um they realized that their client base small to medium-sized businesses um were immediately hit very hard and th these are the people not just businesses but these are the people that they are partnering with on a day-to-day -day bis uh, basis um and just a few facts that i learned about work about working with a peo small businesses that work with a peo grow seven to nine percent faster and are 50 percent less likely to go out of business so you can see why working with and partnering with their clients especially during an economic downturn and basically pause button uh, was going to be really important for them to partner with their uh, clients 
So in our conversations, uh, in my conversations with the client, uh, they said, you know what, Aaron, uh, we want to we want to figure out a way to reach out to our current clients. We want to make sure that they know that we are here for them. We're not looking to drive more sales or anything like that. We want to make sure that we are that they know that we're here for them. The problem is, and I know all of us have experienced this over the last six, seven months, we were getting inundated with COVID updates, uh, emails from our banks, from credit cards, from Amazon, from multiples every single day. And frankly, uh, probably just like everybody else, we started deleting them and not even reading them. And this was one of the pain points for Lions HR, for the their leadership team They said, Aaron, we, we need to be able to get in front of our clients we can't pick up the phone every single time to call them. We'd like to use email. Do we have any solutions? And we brainstormed. And uh, one of the solutions that we were able to talk about was video email. Um, and one of the tools that we use uh, that we can provide to our clients is called Video Now. It's a cool, it's actually a really cool platform that um, you can send video emails from. You can actually um, collect client testimonials or video emails back from them, which is very cool. And then you can expand it to collect uh, uh, video testimonials from those folks as well. And the way that they um, utilize this, they started off by saying, okay, what we're gonna do is we're going to send out uh, video messages to you know a, a subset of our clients. You know they work with small businesses like um, you can see the the video is down below. They work with um, a mechanic garage. They work with a small chain of salons, and they wanted to reach out to them just so that the the owners and operators of those businesses knew that they were making that connection, really making that effort, um, and just saying, hey, how can we help? We'd love to get in front of um, this for you and help you survive. Um, some really cool side effects of this. What they did is they sent out these video emails. Their clients started emailing them back saying, oh my goodness, thank you for reaching out to me. These are personalized videos that they were sending. These weren't just record one video and then um, shoot it out to 100 people. These were personalized videos and they got such a positive response from these that their clients wanted to send video messages back to them. So it was a very natural progression. And the cool thing is, personally, it was very satisfying because I got to watch some of these videos from their clients um, and the gratefulness uh, just from uh, these small business operators being able to uh, really personalize a result, the results and the relationship and highlight why Lions HR was a really critical part of their business. Um, it was really cool to see. Um, you see that they're really cool, uh, really interesting uh, part of this is that the, the clients were sending these messages back. Now, what do you do with these? You know, you can share these with your internal team and, and, and Lions HR did, they shared these with not just the leadership team, but their, their uh, sales associates and all of that to showcase, especially during the shutdown, why, this is why we do what we do. And I know with um, Haley Marketing, one of our core values is providing share worthy service. I wanna make sure that everything that I do is share worthy. Um, and, and one of the interesting things, uh, in retrospect and conversations after this is they said, Aaron, one of the results is that we actually, um, you know, through all of their efforts, but also being able to utilize, utilize this tool, they actually hit their original 2020 sales and growth goals because they were able to utilize these videos and share these with client leads, with, with targets. And one of the things that they, they told me eventually also is that, Aaron, you know, we get a lot of our uh, clients through client referrals. And so being able to reach out and really personalize that connection with our existing clients, we were able to meet our growth goals for 2020, despite 2020. Um, so I thought that was, I think being able to tell this story um, is, is pretty cool. Um, Video now is a really easy tool to use. It's it's instinctive. Um, it's mobile friendly. You can you can record videos on there. So it, it was a very easy tool to pick up, put in their tool tool belt, and be able to utilize from day one. Awesome. Thanks, Aaron. Um, yeah, I love I love the kind of the surprise result is you know they wanted to say thank you or demonstrate appreciation for their clients and help their clients get through a pandemic, and then all of a sudden the clients turned it around and said yeah we want to show you our vendor, how much we care about you too. That, that's just such a great thing to see this year. Another example we wanna to share today, a video, a uh, client of ours in Ohio, and I love this because they have lots of great ideas. They produce great content for their website. Um, they really try to be a, a leader in, 
in their local market and helping employers to make better hiring decisions, better process for hiring, helping people to find work. But how do you get that knowledge out? And, you know, some people like to write, some people don't. Well, you know, a funny thing happened during a pandemic. We all went from uh, working together, working remote, and we all started to spend every single day staring at a camera. So now it became much easier. How do we create video content? And we said, let's look at ways to use Zoom, a tool we're all using now, to create more substantial educational content, to address the challenges our clients are having, to address the concerns our candidates, our field associates have, and then to increase visibility online. And so what they, this company started to do is, let us, let us interview you. We would work with them where we would conduct an interview over Zoom, record it, and then use the interview to turn into content. So the content became, with a little editing, some really nice branded videos that can be shared on their website, on YouTube, on social media. Transcripts can be made of those videos to create great long format blog posts. And the process of creating and sharing this content on a regular basis further increases this company's positioning as a leader, an expert, somebody that cares about their community. And we've found that we're doing this for a number of clients right now. Leveraging the tools that we're all now comfortable with is a great way to improve search engine optimization, social media visibility, to drive inbound sales leads, to support outbound sales efforts using these videos, uh, and essentially to make sales and recruiting more productive just by pulling out the expertise that's already in your head and putting it into a really consumable format through videos and then the conversion of those videos to multiple forms of content for your website and for social media. All right, and that uh, we talked about adapting to, to change in the world. That talk brings us on to Haley Mail. Haley Mail is our content marketing solution where we provide content for your website that positions you as a, a thought leader that helps demonstrate your expertise in staffing that adds value that salespeople can use to nurture relationships. We provide tons of web content. We provide email content to leverage what's on the web and new content to stay top of mind with clients, prospects, candidates. We try to promote the content that's on the website to get more people to come and consume that content, more people to fill out landing page forms and the landing pages are part of Haley Mail. So it's everything you need to have a content marketing strategy in one package. However, what do you do during COVID? Well, we really learned that we have to pivot. And our clients pushed us, we pushed us. Like, how could we add more messages to show people we're paying attention to what's going on in the world? We're not being tone deaf to the challenges people are facing in jobs, the stress that they're facing because of their personal work situation or their family situation or health situations. How can we implement more timely? relevant, and sometimes just fun topics take people's mind off of what's going on in the world. How can we put that into Haley Mail? Well, we always had a tool in the product called Instant Mail or e their e-cards. And every month we made up e-cards to go with the seasons, the time of year, uh, staffing promotions, hot jobs, top candidates. But in the last six months, our Haley Mail content team has really said, you know what, we need to do more. And how can we be adjusting our imagery? How can we be adjusting our message? every single month based on what's going on in the world. And so that's the strategy is trying to be more timely, more relevant and share more reasons that staffing companies can stay in touch with employers and job seekers to keep themselves top of mind, to nurture relationships uh, without having to try to figure out how do I call everybody because I can't meet face to face. What's really cool is they've had a significant improvement. They went from, you know, the average open rate on email is about 9%. These were getting low end 10, high end 15 for our clients. So we're looking at, it says 6% is the industry average here. And, and I was giving it at nine, but the significant you know, 1.5 to two times more response by just having messages that are thoughtful and timely. The, um, before I move on to the, the direct marketing, the other thing with, with Haley Mail is we found that as companies and salespeople are trying to sell remotely, Having the content to share is something that they're using in touch campaigns. I've seen a number of consultants in the industry recommending 12 to 16 step touch campaigns to try to open doors for selling. And we're going to talk about direct marketing, which gets into this next, but I want to just kind of segue with the Haley Mail. 
the key to having a really good touch campaign is having really good content. I can't reach out to somebody 12 to 16 times and say, buy from me, buy from me, buy from me. I have to add value. I have to nurture the relationship. I have to find things that I can share that are going to be relevant and interesting to the prospect, even to existing clients. I got to give them something that merits their time. And that's where, whether you're blogging or using a tool like Haley Mail, you really have to be focusing on right now, what are the problems, challenges, interests of the people I'm trying to reach? And how do I produce content that will resonate them? And how do I then make it easy for them to consume it? So Haley Mail, integrating email with the content is one way. Now we're going to switch to Kelly taking us through some integrated direct marketing, which is another way. Great. Thanks, David. Um, the first example we have here is actually a custom integrated direct marketing campaign. Much like our custom websites, we start from scratch with this and we will concept a theme for your business and then carry that theme throughout many touch points, as David just mentioned, um, that are relevant to your audience. This particular example is for Top Notch in Wichita. And the theme that this is built around is keep your business cranking. You'll see the gears in their logo. So that kind of plays off that idea. And this particular campaign has been carried through a brochure, landing page, note cards, dimensional mailer, supporting emails, letters, LinkedIn, follow up and all of that. And I think that one of the really cool things about this particular campaign was the dimensional mailer was a flag that they created that had the Wichita flag and the top notch logo. So when people received it, they were working with the Wichita pride that was happening during COVID and during the shutdown. And by having that initial dimensional mailer show up with a flag that you could put on the wall. So that was the first one as a direct marketing campaign. The next one, this is also a custom campaign. This one's actually a digital campaign that was run for recruiting in motion. And the theme on this campaign is matching the future, sorry, mapping the future of hiring right there on the screen. Um, it was carried out through an ebook landing page pay-per-click and actually blogging content to drive traffic to their website to download the ebook. The mapping theme plays off of their name, Recruiting in Motion, keeping that motion idea. And then throughout the ebook, we used maps and different graphic map graphical elements to carry that theme through along with, as you can see on screen, some copy terminology charting a course for success in 2020 and beyond. But with direct marketing, we don't have to start with a custom campaign. We do have door openers campaigns that already have pre-designed pieces that we can customize to your, to your company by including your logo on the back of the content on these postcards. So what we've got is putting America back to work. This is a campaign that our team came up with specifically to get employers thinking about gearing up for the reopening after COVID. Here on screen, you'll see this was job store staffing out in Colorado, and it's a series of postcards and sales letters and phone calls that we already have designed and will customize to your particular business. The great thing is I heard this morning from the client that they started this campaign in July. They've got 250 prospects that they've been targeting and they got eight to nine new clients. They're on the last week of the campaign and they're hoping to add one or two more. So with a small investment of 250 pieces of each one of these pieces, they've got a decent return on investment there with eight to probably 10 or 11 new, new clients to work with. And Kelly, before we go on, one of the things about the door openers is it's it's a 13 week touch program so that every week there's a different piece. You see on screen three of the pieces, but they are, these are three of the 13 touch points and it mixes in direct mail in different formats, email follow up, connecting on LinkedIn. So there's a structured process that creates that 12 to 16 touches. And you know, it's wonderful that they've had somewhere between you know eight closed and probability of 10 to 11 new clients. Uh, closed over the period of 13 weeks from this campaign. Yep. Great. And then on um, the next example I have here is for Cornerstone Staffing down in Texas. And they actually took the same campaign, but we created a series of emails because they felt their audience was not necessarily going to be in office and the hard pieces would not resonate. So we turned these into a series of emails that they've sent out throughout um, another, it was another 13 week campaign with 13 different emails. So it's a digital version of the previous campaign. 
and I'm sticking around for collateral. <laughs> So um, we do some great collateral pieces here. Um, this is Marquee Staffing. We saw their custom website earlier. This is an ebook and booklet that was created to position Marquee as partners and experts, particularly how they handle um, COVID and what steps and safety steps. We show people what steps are being taken to get back to work safely. This is a client-based piece and there's an ebook and a landing page where you can download um, from their website. And Kelly, before before we move oh. on, I just, just want to highlight one thing is, you know, as for everybody listening today, if you're thinking about like, how do I use direct marketing? How do I use collateral to sell? We really want to be considering is, you know, every staffing company right now is sending out email, not just staffing companies, every salesperson on the planet is sending out e email. Every e-commerce company is sending out email. And that doesn't mean email is not effective. It just means if you're going to get your email read, if you're going to get someone to respond to you, it's got to be really on point with the issues your clients are facing. So you know, this is a time to ask your salespeople, what are the objections we're hearing right now? What are the top concerns our clients are having? And maybe not even your salespeople, but asking your recruiters that question. You want to know what are the concerns employers are having? And then you develop your collateral, your direct marketing campaign around those issues, because that's the stuff that's going to get opened. All right, yep. the next one. We all start with what is the pain point of your audience? <laughs> um, and again, this is actually the final collateral piece we'll be showing today. It's a sell sheet. It's eight and a half by 11, two-sided. And this is particular for a niche for people who are looking for semiconductor engineering and notice our experts at making these placements. This is a beautifully designed sheet. The back of it's very easy to read. It's got a lot of icon graphics that split up the some statistics and text. So you're not just reading a paragraph of text. I this and the front obviously talks directly to engineers with that image there. So I think this is a beautifully, beautifully designed piece. Okay, so you know, the way it speaks to engineers is data. And that's again knowing your audience. <laughs> Is, you know, a, a technical audience doesn't want to hear lots of marketing hype. They want to see facts and figures. And this company, Novus, did a great job of saying, hey, we've got this data that says we're really good. And we know our value. And I love the, the first headline there on the right. Pretty close resumes are a waste of your time. Um, they understand their value is getting the right person for their clients. And they have the expertise to deliver it. So sheet of paper, eight and a half by 11, or a PDF that's two-sided, you know, two, two pages long, just a nice relatively simple way to convey great value, uh, low cost to produce, uh, and a piece that they can then turn around and use for years to come. And that brings us to the uh, last section here, branded content. And I mentioned that uh, the guys from Mamu Media joined the Haley team back in February. And we're going to wrap up talking about some of their services. So you can kind of see what goes into branded content. That's like, it, it's putting a lot of the things we've talked about today together into one package. And when we look at branded content, it's not just about getting one thing, it's about having a strategy, a strategy around content, strategy to break through the clutter, get the attention and interest of the buyer of staffing services, open the door for the salesperson, give the salesperson something more meaningful to talk about, positioning the company as an expert, doing all of these things through different forms, different methods of communication and its smart content strategy here it includes a branded magazine you see johnson hills hr insights the front cover of their magazine a 20 page magazine that they do every other month it's both print and digital versions that addresses key hr leadership issues um, awesome publication cover branded inside and out uh, complete with a letter from the ceo an ad for the company in the back cover and lots of really excellent educational content in the middle. That's married to video content. We take some of those featured articles and we create videos so that it's another way to share the expertise, drive people back to Johnson Hill's website using this video content, whether it's shared on YouTube, shared on social media, shared on their blog. We also have taken their content and created a resource center. And this is part of the beauty of the marriage of, of Mamu and Haley Marketing is we have some really cool technology that allows us to create these resource centers or libraries of web content. 
Mamo had tons of content, but really once it was used, no great way to continue to leverage it. We said, let's take the content, put it in a resource center. So someone who's implementing this smart content strategy, they have the magazine, they have the videos, they have email, but now we have an entire library of content that goes with the whole HR insights theme. And lastly, social content, actually providing tools, graphics, and sharing plans to take snippets of the content, have the, the team at Johnson & Hill, or any company using it, but here, the team at Johnson & Hill, sharing those social graphics to drive people back to the resource center, back to the magazine, back to the videos, to create more engagement with the Johnson & Hill brand, build their reputation, and more reasons to then engage with the company. We also are bringing people from social media back to their website where we can do more things to drive action. And from the beginning of today's presentation on websites to the end on branded content, this is really what great marketing is all about, is thinking through what do my customers want? What do candidates want? What do the employers want? How do I bring them to what they want? It's not just about differentiating your company. That's part of it. But what do they really want? Do they want the right talent? Do they want faster hiring? Do they want less pain in the job search. They want someone to manage the details for them. You really want to understand your clients. And then that gets turned into all the things we looked at today. It gets turned into your web content, your branded content, your emails, your blogs, your social media with that cohesive strategy. So I hope, because that brings us to the end of our presentation, we will stay on the line for a few minutes uh, to answer questions. There, uh, there was one coming in that I'll answer in just a minute, but if anybody has questions, use the question box to ask us anything you'd like to know. Uh, you can also, if you want to talk more about any specifics, like how would this apply to you, give us a call, 888-696-2900. Email us, info at haleymarketing.com. We are more than happy to brainstorm ideas for you. We'll actually put together a roadmap or a game plan just for your business, whether it's on your overall marketing or specifically on recruitment marketing. If you're dealing with too much of that ghosting and, and too much uh, too many unfilled job orders that we'll be happy to put together those programs for you. All right. The, the one question I've had so far is, you know, are any of the services bundled together? And yes, uh, we have a lot of different programs where we put things together. So we have something called digital dominance where we put together blogging or Haley mail along with our social pro service, along with reputation management. We have a smart content summer sale that uh, is going on right now. We put together the branded content solutions you've seen. Um, so if there's a specific question, we can, are more than happy to look at how we can put together the right package for your business. All right. Well, that brings us right to the end of the hour. So I'm just going to put up one more slide. Well, I, I lied. Two more slides. Um, one, I forgot this one was here, is our COVID recovery page. You've probably seen us talk about this before. This is a page we put up back in March to provide lots of educational content on how you get through economic downturns. And while we've seen this really strange year of uncertainty leading to now for many companies, a dramatic shortage of candidates they can get to go to work to some really bad economic news coming out for you know, Main Street America and particularly the hospitality industry, this is unprecedented challenges for staffing. So we put together this webpage to help you address those problems. We just added more webinars to that page, more eBooks, so that there's more to help you sell. And, and for the person who asked the questions about packages, we actually on this site have six different packages listed at the bottom of the page with promotions on a number of our services to help you do more and, uh, and spend less on your marketing. And here's our last slide. We have one more webinar coming up this month. Uh, it's on recruitment marketing. So if you want to see more about not just the programmatic that Matt talked about er earlier, but really best practices in all the four areas or four pillars of your recruitment marketing, career sites, the job advertising management, social recruiting, and your employment branding. Join us on Tuesday, the 27th, as we will go through the specific things that we do to help companies with recruitment marketing. All right, from all of us at Haley Marketing Group, I really want to thank you for being part of today's show and tell session. I hope you enjoyed some of the show and the tell, um, and we look forward to seeing you on our next Lunch with Haley webinar. Take care.